Come on, church. Hey, how many of y'all still get newspapers? Four? Oh, man. I, <laughs> uh, I remember when my parents used to uh, subscribe to the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Y'all probably got something different up here. But uh, we would find them everywhere. That is accurate. They were on the roof. They were in the bushes. Sometimes you just couldn't find them. I don't know what happened, uh, but they just went missing. But hey, we, uh, we have started a series the last couple of weeks called the Book of Matthew, and that's what the bumper was all about. And this summer, we're just studying the, the teachings, the conversations, and the encounters with Jesus Christ. And Pastor, Pastor Seth started last week uh, talking about the grace of God, talking about the genealogy. How many of y'all remember that? Yeah. Seth's going to be really proud of all of you. Uh, I'm going to report back and say half of you remembered. Uh, <laughs> No, but I think they're uploading every message to YouTube, so I would definitely go check that out. It was, it was a great message for me, uh, and I know that it was for you as well. But my name is Justin. Uh, my wife and I, she is up here with me. Uh, we have been married for just over five years. We attend and are on staff at our Conway campus. Um, and little known fact, uh, Seth and Kendra, the pastors here, we did college ministry together. Uh, several years ago now, uh, many years ago, uh, we started at our Conway campus. They were leading like a serve team, uh, and then they started like brainstorming meetings together. And I think those were just dates. Y'all just y'all went on dates and just told us y'all were planning ministry. Uh, but now they're pastoring here in Fayetteville, and we could not be more proud of them. And man, I, I just I've never seen somebody. And those of you who have been here for several months now, you know this about the Tombolis. I've never seen somebody more honest and more vulnerable in their leadership, uh, in the way that they communicate God's word, in the way that they pastor people, and so passionate about the call of God on their life, uh, the way that they sacrifice and give everything to what God has for them right now. And if you love your pastors, yes, come on, if you love pastors, give God praise this morning for your pastors. I love you, Kendra. I love you, Seth. He's not here, but he heard that. Um, but we're going to get into scripture, so if you want to turn to your Bibles, Matthew 6 is where we're going to uh, plant today. We're going to, uh, how many of y'all heard about the Lord's Prayer? We're going to cover one of the teachings today. We're going to cover a small part of that. Uh, but just a little bit about myself as you're finding your way to Matthew 6. Uh, I grew up in Cabot, Arkansas. Go Panthers. Uh, y'all that are from Fayetteville, y'all know we were 7A Central Rivals. I guess y'all weren't Central, but whatever. Uh, but we played you guys. Y'all beat us several times in the state championship of baseball. <sighs> Still not over it. Uh, no, but we, I went to college in Conway, a little uh, Christian college called CBC, just to play baseball. Had no other agenda there other than uh, hitting dingers, as some would say. I didn't hit any of those. <laughs> Uh, but ended up going there, uh, played for two years, and then God started stirring inside of me a call to ministry. Uh, my first year of college, I walked in the doors of New Life Church, and one thing that I do vaguely, or not vaguely, I, I specifically remember, is the way that growing up in church, some of you can relate with this, but when I walked into the doors of New Life, I no longer felt like I had to have it together coming to church. Uh, not to say that all you broken people need to stay messed up and broken. But they loved me right where I was at. They gave me a place to belong. They gave me an opportunity to serve. I, I realized God's love for me, and I had never experienced that before in my life. Uh, I realized that there was more to this relationship with Jesus than just showing up to church and doing good things. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Uh, I walked in, and I felt the love of God, but not only through the worship service, through the teachings, through his word, but through God's people. And story after story, Seth is telling me all that God is doing up here. I know that you are a people who are loving people really well. And so the report all the way back to Conway, we had staff meeting this last week. We are excited about what God is doing because we know he's up to something, not just in New Life Church Fayetteville, but around the city of Fayetteville. There's something like 6,000 brand new students that show up here every day. Probably several thousand people stay when they graduate. This is going to be a place where mature believers are birthed out of. And y'all are going to send people. Y'all are going to populate all of the United States with people coming out of Fayetteville, Arkansas, because of the discipleship and love that you have for people in this church and the surrounding areas and the churches in this city. If you believe that, let's give God praise this morning. I'm believing it. Hey, enough about me. Uh, let's dive into Scripture. Y'all ready for the Word? Come on. He said this was the, the best crowd, the loudest. Y'all talk back. Y'all are fun. Y'all better not prove him wrong. So here we go. Y'all ready? Matthew 6, 9 through 15. 
How many of y'all brought your Bibles today? Wave them like you, like you just do care. Seth said that last week. Come on. He said, BYOB. College ministry, that means something different. But he said, bring your own Bibles. <laughs> so if you brought your Bibles, you're doing well today. But if you don't, it's up on the screen. Let's read it together. It says, this then is how you should pray. This is a good start. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Some translations say forgive us our sins as we also forgive our debtors. How many of y'all used to play athletics and you used to say this the fastest you could before a game at the end of practice? Yeah, I was there. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, the will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread. I mean, I, did, I, had no, I showed up as a freshman in the baseball team. I had no idea what was happening. But I just had to catch on. I asked somebody what was going on. They said, it's the Lord's Prayer. Come on, bro. So I just had to go home and learn it. And then I could never say it that fast. But now that I'm a preacher, I, there's hope for you, I promise. <laughs> I'm kidding. It says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. Somebody said, ouch. Today, what I want to focus on is just a small portion of the Lord's Prayer that talks about forgiveness. And I know uh, this, this message was birthed out of something that happened a few months back uh, as I was having to walk through the steps of how do I forgive somebody when I really don't want to. How many of y'all not wanted to forgive somebody in your life that hurt you? <laughs> I, some of y'all lying. I know you are. I know we got people in here that have been hurt so bad that you're like, man, they don't deserve it. They don't, I, I don't need to do this. So I, I don't feel like it. I'm not going to do it. But today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk through God's word, and we're going to realize the importance of forgiveness. And I believe uh, God's going to unlock some things that have been inside of us for so long, remaining stagnant, maybe even dead inside of us. But when we forgive other people, when we walk out forgiveness, God's going to unlock something in our life. Let's pray. God, I pray for the message today. Lord, I pray for your word. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me. God, I pray that your scripture would uh, highlight things in our lives, Lord, that we need to uh, maybe pay attention to or maybe something that we've, we've uh, uh, gone without thinking about for so long. God, I pray that you would uh, be so kind and gentle uh, as we dig up some of these things that have happened to us. And Lord, as we wrestle with what do we do to forgive Lord, I just pray that a spirit of forgiveness would be over this church. Lord, I pray that as we look at maybe what things that we have done, and maybe some things that people have done to us, God, I pray that we as believers, as your people, that we would be quick to forgive. Lord, it says that you know, people will know the, your followers by the love, but I'm praying that we would change the culture around us by the way that we forgive. And Lord, I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of you have ever had a nine-month-old son? So I'm going to show you a picture of my family. This is our family right here. We have Emily. You'll see her. And then we have a nine-month-old baby boy. His name is Denver Gray. Everybody say hi, Denver. Yep. He didn't hear you. Uh, but then we have a dog named Theo. Theo's fine. He doesn't like car rides, so we never take him anywhere. He whines the whole time. But now... I think he's been discipling his, son, his brother because now his brother is at a point where he does no longer like to sleep in the car. So I'll tell you this story. We're driving three hours to Fayetteville on Friday with him, of course, and it's nap time, and uh, I'm responsible for controlling the screaming that happens in the car. And so I'm tasked with the bucket of toys, I'm tasked with the snacks, and I'm tasked with the car seat cover to make something happen. So I'm praying. I'm laying on hands in the back seat. I'm trying anything I can do to get this boy to go to sleep. So 15, 20 minutes go by, and he's wailing in the back seat. And I don't know how many of you, some of y'all are just such good parents. Y'all just have such a grace for these little ones and the gift that they are. I ran out. Uh, somewhere, somewhere around Russellville, Clarksville, I was done. So uh, this is me in the back seat as we, <laughs> I'm, I'm so embarrassed. My wife's laughing hysterically in the front seat. My, 
my son literally is crying because I opened the car seat. I yelled at him, just go to sleep. And then I continued to rip the car seat cover off and just dump the bucket of toys in his lap, which made him more furious. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, my wife got back there in about 10 minutes. He was asleep. So some of y'all need forgiveness. I need forgiveness. I'm telling you, if my son could tell me, he said, Dad, you need to apologize right now. <laughs> There's different times every day. It doesn't matter what we run into. There are times in our lives that we need to ask forgiveness and we need to extend forgiveness to other people. How many of y'all had a splinter in your finger before? How many of y'all worked with wood? So when you get a splinter in your finger, what do you do? What? Y'all yep. don't know? Well, this is going to be life-changing. When you get it. A- <laughs> When you, when you get a splinter in your finger, this is what, some of y'all nasty old folks, some of y'all like, some of y'all digging with your teeth, that's gross. Some of y'all just need to buy a dollar pair of tweezers, it's going to be, it's change your life. Get some tweezers, pull that thing out, and then you're going to be able to do anything you want to do. But if you don't pull that thing out of your finger, this is what's going to happen. Anything you touch, what happens? It's going to hurt. And a day or two goes by, what's going to happen? Your whole hand about to hurt. It's going to get infected. It's going to get bad. You're going you're gonna to be like, ooh, I don't even want to see that. Like, you've got to deal with the pain that's happening right now in order to continue on with your life. In the same way, in our relationship with other people, we have got to deal with the pain in order to move forward in the life that Jesus Christ wants for us to live in. So for some of us, I know for some of you in here, you've been living maybe weeks, maybe months. Some of you for years with the pain, the hurt that happened to you however long ago. So I want to ask a question this morning before we move on. Who has hurt you before? I want you to identify something in your life. And men, I know what you're thinking. Oh, my wife about to get a sermon today. <laughs> no. Men, I'll tell you what. I'm about to get vulnerable with you because I'm about to tell you what happened to me here in a few minutes. But like, like most men, I shut off the emotion. I, I want good vibes only in my life. I, I'm, I'm like, if something's hard, put me to work. I'm going to go out, fix something. I, I'm going to feel good about myself. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know about you. I, I ain't dealing with the sadness, the emotions, the hurt, the what's going on in my mind right now. Why do I feel? No. I don't want that. Some of you need to, and, and you wonder, us men, we wonder why we get angry quickly. While we yell at our son in the car seat. I'm preaching to myself. Some of you are wondering why you need a drink. It's because of the pain and the hurt that we have not dealt with. Today, what I've been praying and believing for since the middle of last week. Is that there would be a spirit of of forgiveness and freedom. On this church. Because I know as many believers, we got to have it together. Us parents, we got to quickly move on because we got something else to do. We got to parent the kids well. We got to move on from that scenario. But it's time that we settle the accounts, what's going on inside of us, and really deal with the pain. Who's hurt you? I'm going to list a few. Maybe some of you need to forgive yourself. Maybe an action or something that you did that you seem that, that you think is unforgivable. Let's trace back and begin to forgive ourselves. For some of you, it's a spouse. You've lost trust. Maybe you've lost hope. Maybe it's one of your kids. Something they said, or maybe something they didn't say. Maybe they don't talk to you at all anymore. Maybe it's a coach, a family member, a friend. What about a mom or dad? All you wanted to do was please them. Measure up to, to the expectations that they have. But they, all they did was they communicated the opposite. An authority figure, somebody who was supposed to protect you or maybe keep you safe, did the exact opposite. A boss, co-worker, or maybe somebody's post on Facebook. Come on. That's, that's probably half the hurts that we deal with in our, in our culture today. Is we're passionate about a topic, we see somebody we don't even know posting about something. And it makes us mad. And we think about it for a week, two weeks, three weeks. And then you can't let it go. And then you post something. <laughs> You're making everybody mad. Listen, there's a, there's a cycle 
of unforgiveness, of offense, of bitterness. Offense will, will choke out any life in our life. Anything we've got going, anything that's going strong, if we settle with offense, if we sit down, snuggle up on the couch with that Snuggie and, the, and offense right next to us, it may feel good, but it's not going to turn out good. How do we forgive? But then I always come back to this question. How do I forgive somebody I don't want to forgive? Y'all ever said that? How do I forgive somebody that, that don't deserve it? That's a valid question. We're going to look at scripture. How many of y'all have ever vacuumed the house? Men, this is a great time to raise your hand. Okay. Some of y'all that have vacuumed, you know, my wife got a brand new vacuum a couple months ago. She was like, we got one, but like, we need a different one. I'm like, no. So we bought a new vacuum. <laughs> and then it's one of the cordless ones that charge, you know, whatever. So we're vacuuming and like, occasionally, we got a lot of food on the floor of my house. So I'm... I'm vacuuming, and like one spot won't come up, so what do I do? I just kind of change positions. I'm like, oh, this will get it. And so I go at another angle, and then maybe I'm at another angle. And then what do you do if you end up can't get, in the, can't get the vacuum to pick it up? You pick it up. That's right. And then what do you do after that? No, you throw it back down on the floor, and you try to vacuum it up again. <laughs> How many of y'all done that before? I know you have. Y'all, y'all trying to lie in church. So I'm over here. I'm trying to vacuum it up again. And most of the time, it will come up. What do you do when you try to forgive over and over and over again, no matter what angle you go at it from, and it just seems like you can't forgive that person? Today, we're going to dig through Scripture and find out. Point number one, we got to know, in order to forgive somebody, we got to know forgiveness is not fair. This is going to be a good message to take notes on today because maybe you're not walking through something difficult right now, but in six months, maybe you are. In the heat of holiday season, and you're with family and Uncle Bob makes you real upset, you have to look back at these notes. Number one, forgiveness is not fair. Psalm 103, verse 10, it says, He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Thank God we do not receive forgiveness because we deserve it. <laughs> because if we, de if we got what we deserved, how many of y'all know we it would not be forgiveness? It would not be the grace that God has for us in our life. Thank the Lord that grace and forgiveness is free for us. We don't, have to des we, don't, we don't have to work for it. But we want other people to work for it. We want our friends and our families to work for the forgiveness we're going to give to them. Church, I'm here to encourage you. It's not fair. It's not going to be fair. It never was fair. But we have to be a people who forgive. Forgiveness is not fair. What have you been forgiven for? What has God forgiven you for? I'm going to list a couple that I, a few weeks back I, I sat, sat in process with the Lord. What, what in my life, because how many of y'all know, y'all some of y'all have lived some life. Some of y'all have lived a little bit less life. How, how much has God really forgiven you for? For me, when I was young, I lied and I stole a lot. I mean, not like stole like department store stole, but like my friend's stuff action figures, maybe some of their cards, like whatever, whatever I can get my hands on, I'm taking it home with me. I lied to get my way. High school, early high school through college, a little bit after college, lustful thoughts, addictions. I showed up to church, realized God's grace was free. I can walk in a brand new life. God forgives me of those things. Right now, in this, in this season of my life, pride and selfishness. I got nine months old. I'm selfish. I, I want the car to be quiet. I don't want to wake up at 510. Ever. But guess what? We doing it. Thank you, Lord. I'm prideful. I am selfish. I have got to die to myself every single day. What has God forgiven you for? I want you to write that at the top. And if you don't have time to process right now, let's think about that later today. There's a, all of us got some baggage in our life. There's a worship video on, on Instagram uh, that popped up the other day, and this perfectly set up what it is that we need forgiveness for in our lives. Check this out. Hold on, we got to go back. We got to go back. Your production team working hard this morning. Come on. Let's do it one more time. 
We need the audio. Is you still love me, Lord? Even in my darkest moments. When I was in all the wrong places with all the wrong people. Y'all can relate. When I didn't say thank you at the drive through Thank you, Lord. When I stole a DVD of Shrek 2. When I committed tax fraud. Uh -oh. My brother went to prison even though he was me. That old lady down a hill for no reason. When I told my friend his dog went missing, but I ran it over. You still love me. Yeah, the laughter is it was funny at the beginning, but then it was like, oh, you really did that? Listen, that's what our lives look like. We can sing about it and thank the Lord for Lord, thank you for setting me free. Thank you for having given us a blessing in our finances. Thank you for the way our kids are, are being raised right now. But, Lord, I don't want to be truthful about this area of my life. What has God forgiven you for? Let's be honest. Point number two, forgiveness flows. Listen, when, when we come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit inside of us. God to Jesus Christ gives us joy, peace, peace. Any blessing that falls in our life, favor, anointing, anything in our life is because of God himself, the love that he has for us. Through Jesus, we receive all those things that he has for us, including forgiveness. All throughout the New Testament, you see Jesus time and time and time again. Prodigal son, uh, Peter, denying him, rooster crowing three times. There's several stories, the un, uh, unforgiving servant, the guy who was forgiven several hundred thousand dollars, goes over and asks for a hundred dollars from the guy that owes him money, and this dude puts him in prison. Time and time again, the, there's, a, there's a continual theme, many continual themes through the Bible, but forgiveness is something that is always gone back to with Jesus. Even he, he's up on the cross. The thief is right there next to him. He says, hey, he talks to the other thief. Do you, not, do you not even fear God? What are you doing? All he asks Jesus is, hey, remember me when you get to your kingdom. And Jesus says, you're forgiven. You'll be in paradise with me forever. Forgiveness is something that is always before us in Scripture. Forgiveness flows to us. But a lot of times we just let it stop there. We're like, thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness. It feels great. we got to let it flow through us. Amen. Forgiveness must flow from Christians to other people. They're going to see us and know us by the love we have for them. But the way we forgive them will make them want more of Christ. Because that's not like the culture. That's not like the world we live in. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. You're conforming by unforgiving, by holding on to bitterness. In Luke 17, 3. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Rebuke them. Basically, that just means call them out. Call them on the phone. Hey, Doug. What you said really hurt my feelings. Kind of messed up about it. Uh, just needed to tell you. Man, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Hey, I saw you run over my dog. You lied to me. <laughs> Look, we got we to gotta have a conversation. We got to be willing to say, hey, this, this messed me up. This hurt me. Some of y'all feel like that, that barrier that we've put up is now keeping us from any kind of conversation at all. Who do you need to talk to today? It says, uh, rebuke them, and if they repent, forgive them. Okay. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Now let me just be honest with you one, one, one quick second. You sin against me one time today, I'll be all right. You come to me seven times today, not a chance I'm coming to your house ever. I, we're not even friends. I ain't even talking to you no more. That's, that's my flesh. That's what I want to do. I'm like, I'm never going to Fayetteville again. That's, that, town, that town messed up. I don't care how good Omaha's are. I ain't going to Fayetteville. That dude, he was, he was mean. Listen, seven times in a day. Can y'all imagine that? Some of y'all can. Y'all been there. God still asks us, hey, if they repent seven times, forgive them. It's not fair. Forgiveness is not fair. It never will be. But then the apostles turned to Jesus because they realized how 
how far-fetched this is. Forgive seven times? Jesus, what are you talking about? Come on, there's no way I can do this. They say, the apostle said to the Lord, increase my faith. Y'all read that? Everybody say that on three. One, two, three. One more time like you like, are really reading it. Listen, t- forgiveness takes faith. Because I'm going to tell you, when you get to a point where you're like, I don't feel this anymore. I don't feel like forgiving. It's going to take a trusting of, of God. It's going to take a remembering of what God has done for you. God, because you have forgiven me and your word tells me to forgive, I'm going to do it. But the faith aspect comes into, man, I could sit here in this offense and probably feel pretty, pr- pretty proud of myself. I'm going I'm to protect myself. I'm going to set a few boundaries up, and I'm, I'm going to be okay. My family will be fine. We'll get over this. But when we, when we take a step of faith and we say, God, I'm trusting that if I forgive, there's something better on the other side of this offense I've been holding on to. We're not promised. We don't know how the circumstance will play out. I don't know if they'll ever act differently towards me. I don't even know if I'll feel different. But I'm saying, God, I trust you, and I'm taking that step. This is what happened a few weeks ago. In January, I had a father-like figure in my life. My parents didn't go to church. I'm not knocking them for that. We had a neighbor friend that took us all the time. So I show up to Conway. I came to college. A year or two in, I end up meet this guy, and he basically, he just invested a lot into my life, spoke to my potential, everything that I was involved in, my ministry moments, my life groups. I just, it was one of those guys that I just ended up being drawn to, and he spoke massive potential into my life. I see you being called to ministry. I think that's a great gift that you have. I think that here's some things that you can work on, and I just began to, to love spending time with him because of the way that he made me feel like I could do it. There was a circumstance that happened a few months back that we had a conversation, something, uh, something went down in our ministry where we, it was a very difficult situation. And in one conversation, all of that seemed like it was so far from my mind. Because now what I felt from the same person was hurt, pain, attack, like I was less than. That was not the intent, but that's what I received. Like I was now sitting, I was facing, anytime this circumstance got brought up, I was like, like weirdly emotional. Y'all, y'all seen those people like, why are they crying like that? That was me. I had no idea why I was wrestling with this like I was. This was one 30-minute phone conversation. And it was because I ended up, had, I had given so much of my heart so much of what God wanted in my life to this one person. Some of you, if you're living with unforgiveness and offense, it's because you've given too much authority in your life to somebody else. That's right where I was. And we're going to talk about the application in a moment, but what ended up happening is I I asked the Holy Spirit to come in. I said, God, I need you to show me why this is wrecking my life. I mean, I would lay up at night thinking about it. I would get emotional if somebody talked about it. This is the first time I'd ever experienced something like this because normally I'd be like, all right, let's go to Andy's. I got to get the ice cream. I'm going to cope with it one way. I couldn't do it. I'm telling you, y'all are going to reach a point, some of you in here, where you don't know which way to turn. Like, you've got to face this. Because what happened is I would look on Instagram and see their family and their friends and everybody that was involved. And I would like hate them. Some of y'all been there. Y'all know that feeling. And I I could not live with that. I could not live scrolling past really quick. Or closing the app because I was like, ah, I can't deal with that. That will eat you alive. So I ended up having to face it. I got with my counselor. I got with my pastoral counseling Uh, some of my friends and they began to walk me through the process of forgiving somebody that had hurt me when I don't want to do it because what that meant is I felt like I was losing something that was so important to me but the Holy Spirit came in and said hey this is what's going on will you give that to me some of you that 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 sentence right there if God was to say can I have that from you you would cling so tightly 
Or some of you may be like, God, that's what I've been waiting for you to say all along. I want to be set free. I'm tired of hiding it. I'm tired of pretending like it didn't happen. God, how? So really quickly, I'm going to give you two applicable points, and I'm going to take, sorry, three, and then we're going to take one minute and just reflect on what God's going to do today. So some application points for us. How do I forgive? We have to admit the hurt. Imagine you come to my house, and I'm an avid bow hunter, which I'm not, so this is all imaginary. Because this is, I don't even know if this is good. Like it says Easton, I think that's a baseball brand. Uh, so I have an arrow. I'm back in my backyard. I'm like practicing for deer season coming up. I'm be out in deer woods. So I'm shooting the target, and you startle me, and I turn around and I accidentally shoot you with this arrow. In the arm, nothing fatal. Like, come on. <laughs> like, I shoot you in the arm, and you're like, ah! You're not going to be like, ah, oh, what's up, bro? How are you? It's so good to see you. Uh, no, you're going to be like, why did you just do that? Oh, I've got an arrow in my arm. You're going to admit that I just shot you with this arrow. So for some of you, you need to admit the pain that was caused you. But I want you to know there are some people in your life that are having to deal with and wrestle with forgiving you. It's not just us. We have been the reason people are wrestling with unforgiveness. The hurt, the pain. It's because of us. We all need this. We all need to be forgiven, and we all need to forgive. We have to admit the hurt. This is where we, we take authority back. We say, God, this is not going to wreck my life. This is not going to consume my life anymore. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to acknowledge it. Now we've got to pull out the arrow. And what are you left with? You're left with a wound. And you're probably bleeding at this point. Let's do an invitation. Lord, <laughs> you're probably bleeding. So now it's time to address what's going on on your arm. And this is when we invite the Holy Spirit in. We have to take time. And this was over the course of three or four weeks. I don't want you to think that this was like, oh, we took an afternoon, sat at Starbucks. We were like, Holy Spirit, just speak. No. This was three or four weeks of really pursuing the things of God, asking him, Lord, will you show me what is wrong inside of me? Why did this affect me so much? Some of you may be clear, but for some of you, you may have to dig, like I did. I had no idea why it was so emotionally hard for me. We had to pull out the arrow, invite the Holy Spirit. And this is what it says about the Holy Spirit, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. That's the Holy Spirit. And lastly, we have to break the inner vows. How many of y'all ever been to a restaurant and got food poisoning? This is really morbid. I'm so sorry. Two of you? Nobody's gotten sick at a restaurant? What do you say after you go to a restaurant and you get really sick from that restaurant? That's exactly right. Y'all know my message. Listen, when we get hurt, we end up saying, I will never trust that person again. I can never go back to that place. I will not, I won't, I can't. What this does is these are building solid brick walls in between us and the person that ultimately hurt us. And what you're going to have to do, depending on how long you spend building that wall, you're going to have to tear it down. They're not, they're not messed up. They may not even know they hurt you. But you're building this wall, protecting yourself, and you're going to end up being the one that has to take the effort, spend the time, to make things right, to settle it in your heart. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting them to die. There's no way. There's no way it's going to happen. We have to be the ones that forgive. We have to break the inner vows. We have to. Some of us have been living with the vows we created years and years and years ago. What vows do you need to break off today? For just a minute, we're going to, I'm going to ask the keys to come up. We're going to spend some time. I want one minute to reflect on what God is doing in here today. I realize some of you are wrestling with maybe something specific in your mind. Some of you may need to ask the question, who do I need to forgive today? 
God, God, or maybe, who do I need to apologize to? Go ahead and start that process for them. Take the humility, go apologize to that person, but who do I need to forgive? What vow do I need to break in my life? And just see what God wants to say today. This is not a couple thing, this is a you. This is, men, I want you doing it. Women, I want you doing it. Kids, I want you doing it. Who do I need to forgive today? Who do I, who do I need to offer forgiveness to today? What is my first step? Let's take just a minute and ask the Lord.